Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in this video I'm going to teach you two simple learning points all around the muscles of the inner core unit and if you stay around to the very end then I have a special quiz for you to help check that learning as well. Learning point number one, the three layers. Most people don't understand exactly what's going on in the core. They think about core and they know that it's the midsection, but they don't necessarily understand the layers that are occurring. So the first layer is that you have the very deep muscles, and these are position sense muscles. These are really tiny muscles that help us understand where our body is in space. We don't train those. They happen as a result of moving and reacting to our environment. The second layer is something you definitely need to know as part of your level three anatomy and physiology, and that is the inner core unit. And this is responsible for the stability of our core, of our section, and that therefore adds to the stability of our spine and takes the pressure away from the spine, from the ligaments, from the invertebral discs, allowing us to have a more of an injury-free lifestyle and better posture. Then there are the superficial muscles, which make up the outside layer. Now these are the ones you can see on a really ripped person, somebody that's very lean. You can see their six pack, which is their rectus abdominis. You can see their obliques. You can see those muscles that are more superficial. Now the superficial muscles are responsible for physically moving us in space. So they actually make a joint action happen. So those are the three layers that you need to be aware of and they each have very different purposes. Learning point number two, inner core unit. Now the inner core unit is the second of the layers we just went through and it has four muscles as part of it. Now it is a really important one to know for your level three anatomy and physiology exam and you need to know where each of those four muscles are, which we'll go through now. But you also need to know the purpose of that core. So this inner core unit, its purpose is to create something called intra-abdominal pressure. So these muscles tighten, which allows the pressure to be increased. So as the pressure in the center of our, of our torso increases, it protects and stabilizes our bones, which is our spine, our ligaments, and our intervertebral discs, which means that we're less susceptible to injury. It also keeps us in a nice upright posture. So that is what the purpose of the core unit is. But let's break it down and find out exactly what it is. So first of all, at the top, you have the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is literally where the ribs separate in front. Then you have the pelvic floor, which is at the very bottom of your inner core unit. So you've got the diaphragm at the top and the pelvic floor at the bottom. They make like the top and bottom of the cylinder. Then down your spine, you have something called the multifidus. The multifidus, imagine like little Christmas trees, it kind of crisscrosses all the way over your spine. That's the multifidus, it runs the whole length of it. Then you've got the TVA, which is your transverse abdominus, which wraps the entire way round and completes the rest of that cylinder. So imagine this as a cylinder. And in fact, imagine this as a balloon at the end of a party where it kind of goes a little bit soggy um, and it kind of is wilted. If you poke that balloon, it will then tighten because you've increased the surface area, the pressure in the middle goes up. And that's exactly what's happening with the inner core unit. If you take a deep breath and you try not to move the back with that as well, then as you take a deep breath, your diaphragm pushes down. And in that moment, you're actually engaging your core by increasing the intra-abdominal pressure. Now, as part of this, similarly, if you pull up your pelvic floor, you also increase intra-abdominal pressure. And if you tighten your TVA, which is that feeling of pulling your belly button towards your spine, but without moving your spine, you will also increase your intra-abdominal pressure. So there's lots of ways that we can engage our core, which all we're talking about is tightening at least one of those four muscles in our inner core unit and making sure that they stay tight and secure to increase the intra-abdominal pressure in that cylinder. Top tip. There are certain words you need to know in relation to the core and the placement of that in the body so that you can really understand the question that you might get asked in your anatomy exam. Now, these are about superior, inferior, anterior, and posterior. So because it's a cylinder, we've got certain sides to it. So let's start off with the diaphragm. That is the most superior, i.e. it's at the top of that cylinder. Then you've got the pelvic floor, which is the most inferior, which is, means it's at the bottom of the cylinder. Then you've got 
The TVA we're going to say is the most anterior, it's the one at the front, so think antennae, it's facing forwards. And then the multifidus is the most posterior. You need to know those words because they are likely to come up as a description of where in the inner core unit it is. Then point number three, the six pack. So the rectus abdominis gets a lot of attention because it's right on the front and generally we can see it in a very lean person. So this six pack down the front is actually a very superficial muscle. It's not part of our inner core unit and that's something to definitely remember. But this six pack muscle is responsible for a big joint action of flexing the spine, which means that if you wanna work that muscle, instead of doing stability based exercises, you wanna work with the strength of being able to do flexion exercises around the spine, like a crunch, for example. Now that you know everything that you need to know about the muscles of the core, let's check your knowledge. And this is a classic question that will come up in a level three anatomy and physiology exam. So all you've got to do is pop your answers below in the comment section. So which of the following forms the inferior aspect of the inner core unit? So have a little think about what you think the answer might be. And then you've got the answers down here to choose from. Is it A, erector spinae? Is it B, diaphragm? Is it C, external obliques, or is it D, pelvic floor? So pop your answer in the comments below. Have a good think about it. Pause the video if you need a little bit of extra time. And I'm going to tell you what the answer is right now. So the answer is D, pelvic floor. And the key thing to think about when you're looking at this question, or you have a similar question, is that not only do you need to know about the inner core unit, which we've taught you on this video, but you also need to know the terminology of inferior. So remember we were talking about superior, inferior, anterior and posterior. You need to know each of those in relation. So pelvic floor is the lowermost of the muscles within the inner core unit, which makes it the most inferior. Um, so that is the answer to this mock question. If you are looking for more mock questions just like this one, then click the link that is with this video and you'll be able to download 101 mock questions and access them straight away. Please leave us a quick comment below letting us know the main learning point that you got from this video. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button, share with your friends and also don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.